Everybody had a good day today? Let's get started. Let's stand, please. Come on in. Let us take a moment to worship our God in our own way. Blessing his name that he has brought us once again to the near close of another day. Honor him with your, not only with your mouth, but also with your heart. Thanking him that throughout the day, whether at work, at home, or wherever you were, he was there with you. And Father, we thank you that we have come to another Bible study, another session tonight. Thank you, Father, for those who are on the way. Thank you, Father, for those who are tuning in over the web. Lord, you have been so good to us. Even when things look confusing, you are still in control. Father, we, we mourn the passing of two ministers in the gospel, our brethren in Christ. But we don't mourn like folk that don't have hope. For our hope is in you. And you promise that even though we may, when we leave from this realm, we have the promise that in your house are many mansions and you've already prepared a place for all of us. Nobody can take our reservation for our name is written in blood in the Lamb's book of life. That's why we praise you tonight. That's why we love you the way we do. And as we study your Holy Spirit, your holy word. We ask that your Holy Spirit will enable us and give us insight and wisdom and knowledge that not only do we hear the word, but we can put it into action. But we can't even do that without your help. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that because of what you did on the cross, you opened up the way that the Father will receive us and hear our petitions. And as we sit down, just as we stood up, we worship you, give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet somebody before you sit down. Unless some someone in the house has some has some information, I have I checked the I checked the newspaper. I haven't seen any funeral arrangements yet for um, Pastor Witt. Oh, okay, okay, Kim, okay, Mr. B. Sidney Jones, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Well, thank you. That's a little more than that than I knew. Okay. According to the scripture, the light of the body is what? Once again, wait till the microphone because we want the people to hear you I know, I know. over the web. All right. Uh, Matthew 6, 6 chapter 22nd and 23rd verse. Well, that's not answering the question, but um, according to the scripture, the light of the body is what? No, you told me the scripture way to find it, but you didn't tell me what it was. Okay. This is what it says from what I have passing. Mm. Um, it's in the sixth chapter, and it's the 22nd verse. It said the light of the body is the eye of the, is the eye. Mm -hmm. It's the eye, yeah. thine eye is single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. Amen. But did y'all understand what I was saying? You, you, no, you got it right, but you told me the scripture before you answered the question. Oh, I didn't ask the question. I asked the question about it. It wasn't like that. I have to read it. Get the mic. Um. <laughs> Light.
life is so simple. So, some folks just got to make it complicated, ain't it? <laughs> yes, sir. But, but technically, you are correct. Technically. Anyway. Okay, tonight we're going to look at verses 23 through 27. And it's concerning another phase of the time that Jesus was hanging on the cross. Now, 19, we're still in 19. Chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. All right. Bring us up to date thus far. Jesus is nailed to the cross. And folk were mocking him and throwing all kind of slams at him. For a while, both of the thieves that were crucified on each side of him were giving, giving him a hard time. But eventually, the conscience of the one on his right hand got to him. And when, he real, and when he realized that this would be his last opportunity to get right with the Lord and also his last opportunity to die in God, he took advantage of it. And as we said last week, how wonderful that is that he used those last seconds of his life, right, to seal his eternity. Personally, I don't want to take that chance. Because last minute salvation is not guaranteed. Because something may happen where you're not able to speak. Because you got to confess with your mouth. And the Bible also says, who verbally calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But what if you can't say nothing? What if you end up choking and can't say anything? You follow me? And you can't think and you can't. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it in humor, but you, you get the point. So the Lord says, seek the Lord while he may yet be found. Call upon him while he's uh, near you to answer. Because, like I said, last minute salvation is no guarantee. So if you want to take a chance, have at it. All right. Let's get into it. Who want to read verses 23 and 24? Me. Uh, reading out of King James Version, verse 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rent it, but cast lot for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, basically, Roman crucifixion was supervised by Roman soldiers, both to keep order, right, and also to make sure that the man hanging on the cross died, actually died. On the cross, even on the cross, Jesus kept no material possessions. Even the clothes on his back, they took that. And his tunic was gambled for. Now, for some historical facts, okay? I know the, the, most of the paintings and the movies, they show it, right? But basically, victims of crucifixion were usually nailed up there naked. That's why the Bible said that Jesus, right, when he hung on the cross, right, he despised the shame of being nailed and unable to even cover himself 
not only in front, front of his own mother, but other women out there. You follow me? Now, on the, that's, that's, that's Roman custom. But now, on the other hand, when it came to the Jews, the Jewish compassion dictated that men not be executed naked in public, all right? And then even those, and then they allowed even those who would, would be stoned to at least have on a loincloth. So at least the Jews had some compassion, right? Even when they were stoning you to death. But what does this, sh what does this teach us? This shows how low Jesus came down position-wise in order to bring about our salvation. Because it says in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty become rich. Now, all of his other garments, right, it was the custom of the Roman, Roman soldiers that they would take the, the condemned victim, his clothes, and tear them up and divide them, right? But then when they got to his tunic, which, was all, which also included his talit with the tassel, you follow me? It was all made out of one solid cloth, right? And a tunic is a loose, wide neck garment that extends to the hip or the knee and is usually worn with a belt and gathered at the waist, okay? In Jesus's, see, Jesus's tunic was tailor-made. His tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. There was no seam where, you, you know, where it was sewn. It was so well made that they decided that it was better not to tear it into four pieces, seeing that the four soldiers, they had already tore up all the rest of his clothes. In other words, um, it was bad enough they done, they done to, to, took everything the man got, right? But then when they got to that tunic, see, they, they smelled some money. When folk break in your houses, they ain't going to steal your dishes because there ain't no value in that. They want that TV. They want that laptop. They want their computer, something that they can hawk that's got some money value. So when they saw that expensively made tunic, then, but here's the thing. Out of them four soldiers that was in charge of Jesus' crucifixion, who's going to get it? And what do what do folk what what do jokers usually do when there's a profit to be made in one item? That's the old see see that's the old ancient name for casting lots. And here's the thing, even that part, like it was read, is a fulfillment. Because remember, Jesus, his, that tunic reminds us that he is our great high priest, according to scripture. Somebody read Exodus chapter 28. Verses 31 and 32. Exodus 28, verses 31 and 32. <laughs> Exodus um, 28, 30 through 32. Exodus chapter 28, verses 31 and 32. Okay. Okay. And you shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it, 
in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of an habergeon, habergeon, that it be not rent. Did I read the right thing? Let me find that word. Habergeon. Who got a King James with that, with that word that you're trying to? Not the King James. Okay, what's the word you were trying to pronounce? Now? Habergeon. I don't know proper pronunciation. Thirty-one through thirty-two. It's in thirty-two. The last sentence. Habergeon. Oh. Yeah. How you pronounce it? Habergeon. Habergeon, that's how I pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. Habergeon. Okay. <laughs> Something with an H, yeah? <laughs> okay, now here's what it's saying. Jesus' seamless tunic reminds us of his role, like I said, as our great high priest, right? And, and it is based on that text that Sister Owen just read. Aaron Israel's high, high priest, right? Their first high priest, he also wore a seamless garment similar to the tunic that Jesus wore. See, ev see basically everything, whether, in, 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 whether major or minor, almost everything that Jesus did when he was on earth, it was a fulfillment of a, a major or a minor prophecy in the Old Testament. Okay, the soldiers' decision not to tear the tunic to pieces, it fulfills another Old Testament prophecy where it says in Psalm 22, 18, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. When, I mean, think about it, picture this. While the Son of God was hanging on a bloody cross dying for the sins of the world, people were down on the ground uncaringly laughing and playing games and shooting crap at his feet. When somebody say, well, I don't see nothing wrong, you know, in the, I don't see nothing wrong in, in the Bible where it say gambling is wrong. Well, see, the scripture also teaches who do you want to identify with. Take them to this text. Who do you want to identify with? The one hanging on the cross or the one down on the ground below him shooting, shooting dice? Something to think about, ain't it? Somebody read verses 25 through 27. Now let the fun begin. Verses 25 through 27. <laughs> Yeah. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. How many folk today really concern themselves with how their parents are doing? I mean, once you get out of the house, you out on your own, you got your career going, you may even have to relocate. But I'm not saying you're guilty in this room or even those watching the internet, but you may know somebody. They may even be kin to you, might be a sibling. But how many, how many stories have you heard parents say, I'll never hear from that child? 
and you can paraphrase it, I, I, I don't never hear from them till they want something. And think about it. Now that you are a parent and the kids are grown and gone, is anybody in this room can testify that they are experiencing that now? But then the Holy, now that you're saved, remember the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance. How, but you may remember how often did you call your mom and, and daddy? I told you it's going to get tight. See, here's the thing. What goes around comes around. And like Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. And like like the old folks used to say, keep on living. Because if you remember when you you was a, a young kid going through the neighborhood and used to speak to old, old Mr. Brown and Oh, Miss, Miss, Miss Lucy sitting on the porch. Hey, Miss Lucy. Hey, Mr. Brown. Now you the Mr. Brown and Miss Lucy sitting on the porch. But we got a generation now. They'll walk by and look at you like you're crazy. Don't even think about speaking. But here's the reason why. You know I'm, why I'm not so hard on them? Because the parent ain't about maybe 10 years old, older than them. They weren't trained to respect elders. So, see, you can't. You can't expect those young ones out there to do what they were not trained to do. Somewhere between point A and point B, we lost respect for those who came before us. We lost respect for our elders. I know that even on the news telecast, they make, they make it look like if you over 40, something you... You need to be put away somewhere, put out the pasture. But see, here's the thing about human nature, and I'm sure all of us can say this. When you were 12, 13, 14, even in your 20s, the thought of you being in your 60s was like Star Trek. Did you see yourself at, listen, (laughs) at 37, reversing them numbers, the thought of me seeing myself at 73 was beam me up, Scotty. But it's amazing. Now that you are at this point in time, when you look back, you say you you may you may not say it loud, but you will say to yourself, "What happened to all these years?" Wow. Because the Bible teaches that you crawl from your cradle and you walk, and the closer you get to the grave, the quicker time passes. That's why somewhere in between point A and point B. You must be born again. You have no, you had, you may not have had any control whatsoever on who your parents were, your home life, how you was raised, what neighborhood. But you do have say so on where you're going to spend eternity because this is temporary. But when you leave here, that's eternity and you do have a say so. So seek the Lord. While he may yet be found, we good. All right, now let's get on. Let's get on with the, with 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 with. We can't even imagine the agony of Mary and what she was going through and what was going through her head while she stood at that cross, looking up at her son and the condition he was in. There she is, standing there. And I witness to the pain, the humiliation, 
the shame, the suffering, and the death of her firstborn child. Because if you remember, back in Luke chapter 2, as Mary and Joseph brought their newborn son Jesus to the temple to be circumcised according to Moses and to be dedicated back to God, right? There was a godly old man named Simeon who had prayed and asked God not to let him leave the world until he saw the Messiah. See, there's nothing wrong with being specific when you pray. The Lord is not intimidated. Because one way, one thing about the Lord, he ain't going to who and hum. It's going to be yeah or no. Or not yet. Because you may not be ready to handle it. So when he heard the baby Jesus cry and he saw Jesus, Mary and Joseph consented to let him take the baby Jesus in his arms. And he said, now, Lord, your servant is ready to go. See, once you receive Christ, the closer you get to God and the older you get, the more you look, you look forward because death is no longer your problem. Death is just your doorway from time into eternity. Ain't it? That, listen, I know some of us can run up and down this aisle when you think about this. You got a win-win situation. You know where you're going. It ain't no, well, I hope or I think or from what I'm told. No, you know. And when you know that you know that you know what you know and who you know, So not only did he bless the Christ child, but in Luke 2.35, he looked at Mary because he also talked about how Jesus would be offered as a living sacrifice. You follow me? But he also looked at Mary and told her this, and a sword will also pierce your soul. And Mary experienced this very prophecy throughout her son's ministry as he was rejected, opposed, slandered, and plotted against. Even they even slandered through his mama the circumstances of his birth in his face. But standing at the foot of the cross was the ultimate fulfillment of Simeon's prophetic promise where a sword. Anybody ever been in the hospital when the baby was in a patient in there? I remember when our oldest son, he had bronchitis real bad. And we had to put him, and he was in one of these little tinted little things with oxygen in it. And when when we would and we'd be in the in the hospital room and he's beating on it trying to get out, I think Jeffrey was like a year, year and a half. Yeah, and he's trying to get out, and it just tore his mother up. She would leave the room. It was tearing me up, but one of us had to stay in there. You follow me? So y'all, so you understand? It didn't. Ju it don't just hit members' home. It hit every body home. And if I reflect back, and I'm sure my parents felt the same way when I was in the old Georgia Infirmary Hospital in second grade. I had measles, mumps, chicken pox, the thrush at the same time in second grade. Satan was trying to kill me early. I was in the hospital for a month. Oh, no. That, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, because he knew part of what the plan that God had for me. See, he he may not know he he know a lot, but he don't know everything. And if if he knows some of God's purpose for you, he gonna try to catch you young. What you think he why you think he tried to kill Moses? Kill Moses by having them them children thrown over into the Nile. He's trying to get them out, trying to keep Jesus from being born. See, Satan Satan will sit back and watch. 
and he'll either get you early or he'll get, it, get you later. But make no mistake, if God has a purpose for your life, he coming at you, and the Lord allows it. Not because he want to see you squirm. Not because he want to see you frustrated and aggravated. He does it to make you go, go call out the him, to come back to him. Because he know if he, if he allowed you to be spanked enough, first thing you're going to hop, when a child gets spanked enough, what's the first thing? Mama. So we're going to cry out, Daddy God, Abba Father. All of those who looked at Jesus on the cross, all them folks standing there, none of them suffered like Mary did. And notice the scripture says that Jesus' mother's sister married the wife of Clopas. And Mary Magdalene was there with Jesus through his agony on the cross, right, to honor him and to support his mother. It's nothing like having some folk stand and also praying with you at the altar, touching and agreeing with you. But don't let that stop you. If nobody else can come up there with step, go before God, you go by yourself. Because this, this ain't about how many folk you can draw. It's how close you draw to the Lord. But now, Mary Magdalene was also among those who first discovered the empty tomb as evidence of Jesus' resurrection. But here's the kicker. Both in Matthew 27, 56 and in Mark 15, 40, both texts says that Salome, the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, was also standing with the other women at the cross when Jesus died. Right? Then, 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 then the text says, when Jesus saw the disciple whom he loved. That was the humble way John referred to himself. Right? Now, he, he, now he, he, let's, let's, let's see how mad y'all are getting. Because this is the second time he's done this. First at the wedding at Cana. Jesus says to his mother, woman, how would you like Your youngin' when they were small. No, uh, to walk up there and call you by your first name. Let the games begin. See, see me walking up to my mama when I was 12 and 11, or even, or even grown man. I walk in the house, go over on 1221 Murphy, and walk in, hey, Bertha. <laughs> Y'all read the obituary in the newspaper the next day, and there it is. <laughs> Here lies Larry Broxton. <laughs> no, with no lips. Woman, here is your son. But here's the kicker now. But here's the thing. Jesus consciously cared for his mother to the very end. Showing that even on the cross, his attention was always directed towards other, other people and not himself. Even dying on the cross. He still was concerned about other people. When many of us so-called Christians, when we're going through, how many of us think about what others are going through? Are we so caught up in our own little pity party? Do you hear me on the web, out there on the internet? See, me, myself, and I are the three phrases that Satan said, I will ascend upon the throne of heaven. I will sit on the mountain of God. I will be like 
the most high. I, I, I. Don't it sound like this generation? I, I, iPad, iPhone, I, too. If, but think about it now. If there ever was a time when Jesus deserved to be focused on himself, this was it. But here's the thing, and it teaches us. If Jesus cared for his mother, then we need to care for our parents when they can no longer care for themselves. And respect the we back to that phrase again, woman. Remember when she came to him at the wedding at Cana and said, they're out of wine. He didn't say, uh, what do I, what I look like, make his package shop? <laughs> or in my case, out in Carver Village, Carthon. Y'all know them liquor stores where y'all live at now. <laughs> he said, woman. Why come to me? What I got to do with that? My time has yet come. But he would not allow his mother to be embarrassed. Calling his mother woman suggested no disrespect. Man and woman saying man or woman were titles of much respect among the Hebrews. Just as just as uh, much respect, it was just as respectful as we us saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. You follow me? It was just a, it was a sign of the times. Many times we want to, we want to slap our modern way of thinking on, 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 on a society that existed three and four thousand years ago. And really, that's not fair and actually make us look bad. Look at the technology that we have. And look at all they had was a, was a, 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 big, a hammer, a plow, a little thing to make cement, and they built pyramids. They built humongous. Look, when you go over to Rome and Israel and, and certain other parts of, 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 of the world over there, the ancient world, it's amazing what these folk did. With a look, with a with, with 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 literally nothing. It's amazing. And the Bible says from that time on, this disciple, meaning himself, took her to his home. Now here's the thing that I you know, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. Mary had other children born after Jesus. Scripture confirms that Jesus had four half-brothers and at least two sisters. Some, I know, some, somebody read Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 and 47. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 46 and, and 47. 47. Yes. While he yet talked. Mm. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and brethren. His mother and his brethren stood without desire to speak with him. Then one say unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desire to speak with thee. All right. So that, that shows he had some siblings. <laughs> All right. Somebody read Matthew chapter 13, verses 55 and 56.
they made me see feel so unwelcome when I stuck my head in the fellowship hall and interrupted their mission meeting. Huh? I was hurt. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Nina. We still love you, Pastor. <laughs> she got all shook up and forgot what she Matthew 13, mm-hmm. verses 55 and 56. Okay. Um, is not this the p- carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph, Jose and Simon and Judas? Mm-hmm. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? In other words, no matter how much God use you, there's always going to be some folk that only see you as a, f- a member of a family or, you, or where you come from. Amen? So understand, no matter how much God use you, there will always be family members that will only see you as what they always knew about you. If you're the big sister, little sister, or whatever. You follow me? No matter, no matter what, there, are, there will always be family members, and most of them know, you know, I'm a pastor, and they don't mean any disrespect, but, if, but, all, but basically when, when, if you go to family reunions, all they see is just Larry. And I don't run around expecting them to call me no pastor, nothing like that. There ain't no ego tripping. But, I, but it does teach you that, the, y'all ready? Some of the hardest people in the world to evangelize is folk that knew you back when. Because all, if they still got the liquor bottle and the joint in their hand, that's all they see you with. Even though you, you put it down years ago. So don't let that trip you. Don't let that stop you. Because it was in Jesus' family too. And especially if you read his lineage, man, he had some wild jokers. If you read the first chapter of Luke and the first chapter of Matthew and read some of them, some, some of them folk, and also no one race can claim Jesus. Because he had family Egyptians, Africans, uh, Ammonites, Moabites. So if y'all got some Negrites <laughs> in your family tree. <laughs> All right, that's one. Now, somebody else read John 2 and 12. I hope, I hope it's making sense. John 2 and 12. Because there is a point to be made here. John 2 and 12. John 2 and 12. After this, he went down to Capernaus. Together Capernaum. with Capernaum, together with his mother, his brother, and his disciple, and they stayed there only a few days. His mother, his brothers, and his disciples. His four his four brothers that were named in Matthew, and his twelve disciples, and his mother, but also along with Mary Magdalene, Salome, and and those who supported the ministry. See, I heard some old. N- Ninny head preacher tried to say, but see, them women, them girls, see, them girls, they were going with them. The, 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 the devil is a liar. They simply supported the ministry. Because most of those women were pretty well to do. And it didn't, and it didn't really record it, but in many cases, they want them women didn't just leave their husbands and travel alone. The husbands were there too. Okay? Some would go in and out, but overall, they supported the ministry. And that's they were they were what we would call today missions, mission men, um, members or deaconess. Diakonos. It means servant. All right. Finally, somebody read John. Chapter 7, verses 3 through 10. Who got the mic? 
Somebody raise your hand now. You can, you know, you hog the mic. You know. Mm hmm. No, go ahead and quit th taking things so personal. <laughs> so sensitive. <laughs> yeah, because all I was saying was what Sister Clark was thinking anyway. She hogging the mic. Yeah, she does. You know that she ain't complaining. <laughs> if you can't have fun in law, you're in bad shape. Listen, don't take anything personal, all right? We, I do this to keep the atmosphere lighthearted, all right? So now if y'all want me to just be straight and no, no humor, I'll be glad to do that. But I'm going to talk about you in the car anyway. No, but don't take any of this seriously. Go ahead, go ahead, sis. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, seven and three. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that, they, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do this thing, show thyself to, be, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. But your time is always ready. Mm -hmm. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I te I testify of it, that the works there are, are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full, not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Now, here's the kicker to that. You see, you got siblings, you got family members that can go places, and everybody, hey, how you doing, right? But as soon as you come, and God has marked you, anybody, any, any gentlemen, any of y'all ever walked in a barber shop now you and you saved right you walked in a barber shop and seen like soon you couldn't sit down before somebody un zeroed in on you especially if you're a preacher Ooh. oh yeah oh yeah there, there was a time I, I i went i i i changed barbers i said i got sick of getting in arguments and being attacked by people i didn't even know One was telling me, see, 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 y'all, y'all worship that white Jesus. See, see, I said, okay, well, what Jesus you worship? See, no, nah, I believe in, I believe in Islam. I said, oh, really? And I said, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, because I did a little reading. You can't, you can't make points with somebody if you haven't studied, you know. So I asked him. I said, oh, oh, you believe? I said, oh, you believe in Islam? I said, then, then you believe in beating your wife. What you talking about? I said, you said you believed in, in you you was you you believed in, in Islam, the Quran, and it says that if your wife speak to you out in public and you didn't say nothing to her, you, when y'all get home, you have a right to beat her. Oh, I ain't never heard. I said, no, you don't believe in no Islam. Y'all following Farrakhan. Y'all reading that newspaper. I said, secondly, I said, secondly, the Lord also said, thou shalt not commit adultery and fornication. But that teaches that if you kill yourself, blow yourself up, and kill some other people, you have 72 virgins in heaven. First of all, w w w that, that's adultery, sex outside of marriage. Secondly, sex was for procreation on earth to, uh, to sustain the race of humans. Nobody dies in heaven. So anyway, you know what he said to me? I, I ain't never heard all of that. I said, I thought you said you believe in. No, because many people become religious because it's a style. They like the name and, a, and they want to be accepted. And so when, if, when he left, the barber told me, yeah, he's a, he's a, yeah, a rep. See, that joker, that joker been in jail. I said, well, that explains it. He did that to keep the boys. 
Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, no disrespect to anybody. But why, why attack somebody with something you claim you believe and you don't even know all the details of what you claim? If anybody asks me why I'm truly saved, I can tell them. Because there was a day when my sin got worse. And I realized, and something inside of me, because God plays, when he blew the breath of life in all of us, he blew consciousness of ourselves and consciousness of there's a power beyond yourself. Go outside tonight and look up at them stars for a few seconds and don't say nothing. You begin to sense. All that didn't happen by devolution. So, having read these scriptures to confirm that Jesus has sisters and brothers, Mary and Joseph had other children after him. You follow me? So my question is, so why leave the care of his mother to a disciple instead of his siblings? Anybody want to take a crack at her? Why they think? Give her the mic. No, I'm going to get, no, no. If you got the answer, I don't mind. Here you go. The teacher's pet. <clears throat> I believe because they were they were self-centered and into themselves. They they weren't concerned about her and her well-being at that point. They were more concerned about themselves because if he's up there on the cross, they, maybe they were thinking they would be next. Well, I don't know. They weren't no way around. Oh, they weren't around. No. Oh, because okay. if you read when he was getting ready to go to the temple, why don't you go into the celebration and show yourself why you why you ducking and dodging if you claim to be who you are? You need. He said, listen. Them folk hate, they hate me. They don't hate you. He was planning to go, but he wasn't going to, to put them in danger. So once they got, they left, then he sneaked in secretly. Who else? Won? I saw Cynthia and then Sister Owens. No, we'll go around with this. This is open discussion. Their unbelief. They didn't believe in him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good answer. All of your answers are good. That was a good. Yours was yours are good. Like I said, there's no bad answer or question except the one you don't take a yeah. take a shot at. Go ahead. I'm assuming, not knowing factually, that since his sisters and brothers would didn't travel with him, and like most sisters and brothers do, they say things about you until you and knew him all of his life. And his disciples had proven themselves and believed and had faith in him. So that he trusted them more. Good answer. Good answer. Anybody else over here? Y'all mighty quiet over here in the. Yeah, just go over here and hand it to one of them. You would do it and you would like it. Now, don't blame me. I knew it. It goes right back to what she said. I think it's more of a trust thing than anything else because, because um, <clears throat> like I said, it's more of a trust thing than anything else. And he trusted his disciples more than he trusted his brothers and sisters. Yeah, good answer. So far, all of the above, hand it to somebody else. Oh, hold on, hold, hold, hold. And then we come back to Deacon Burke. Oh, we're going to get you now. It's coming back. I'm enjoying this. I'm not sure, but I really think it was civil rivalry in terms because if you read the scriptures, you always see Mary, the mother, was with Jesus. And uh, I really think it was some form of civil rivalry or jealousy. Mm -hmm. You got it. That was one of the main reasons that, it um, was. I, I take. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the coward's way out, but we'll go along. I'm like these two ladies here. No ladies, no games. And I think it was like like they used to say, mama's baby, daddy's maybe. And she, I think she supported him because she went through more with him than with the other children. 
Anybody else? Hold on, come back to Deacon Burt, and then we come to, to, to Brother Foster. No, he, go, he, no, he coming at you right now, Deacon. It's on the way. Me personally, kind of halfway uh, gleaning off someone else, I feel like uh, it was more envy more than anything else because they they were kind of jealous of you, the, mm -hmm. the, the way he was, I mean, with, with the kind of notoriety he, he received and the, the things that he was doing, I mean, he got more attention than they did. So I mm -hmm. think that more than anything, they were jealous of him, envious of him more than anything else. That's my mm -hmm. take on it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Brother Foster, so far, excellent answers. Excellent, all of them. I don't believe they thought that Jesus was who he said he was. Mm -hmm. And that he, you know, because, I, because they didn't take a whole lot of interest in Jesus, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that they should have. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Here, consider this. He wanted to teach us that our relationship in him and in the kingdom of God are even more important than those who you kin to as blood relatives. Secondly, his siblings didn't follow him as disciples during his earthly ministry. So at this time, even at this time, they had, none of them had not yet believed on him. Right? Thirdly, it was jealousy. Seemed like mama just paid more attention to Jesus than the rest of them. Now, he's the older brother. You follow me? It's always one child seemed like the, either the queen bee or the football hero. Got all the trophies that mom and daddy, because they're looking for him to go to pro to buy, him, buy them a house. Until he get to one of them big universities and ran and run into Shaniqua and she get the house. I, I hope ain't nobody speaking from experience, but moving right along. I hear some grumbling over there. Right? And the main thing, and with all of this in mind, Jesus wanted to leave his mother with a believer. See, don't hook up with somebody that don't believe what you believe. I don't care how fine he is. If you told me, I don't believe in that God you believe in, go on and marry him. It's going to be like the Godfather. You ain't going to pull him in. He's going to pull you out. And it could be a herd. Many men in this church, there are men in this church are no longer members because they hooked up with the wrong woman. And some of the leaders in this church hooked up with the wrong man. And the next thing you know, you don't see them no more. First of all, you got to go beyond how fine they are, what kind of car they drive, and even how much money they got, and whether they got their own crib. Because they may be barely paying the rent. Find out what their credit score is. Do they have any money in the bank? Have they invested anything? Do they even have life insurance? And, above all, see what kind of debt they're in. Because if they, you hook up with them, whatever they owe, and especially if you're a man. Am I making sense tonight? All right, we're wrapping it up. You see, Jesus knew through foreknowledge that John, would be first of all, would be the only disciple who would die of old age. So much so that he would even outlive Jesus' siblings. And here's why. And in case you forgot, you got to understand who Jesus is. In case you forgot, John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, Jesus. And the word, Jesus was with God, and the word, Jesus, was God. Woo! And I close with one statement. The saying he is, yesterday, today, 
and forever. Why? Because the Jehovah, the Yahweh of the Old Testament is the Jesus, the Yeshua of the New Testament. Grab your pens. Mm. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Mm. I love Bible study. I, 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 I praise God for the preaching ministry, but I love Bible study because we can break things down and learn from one another. We, I learned uh, I learned from you tonight, just like I hope y'all learn from me. And I hope those who watch Bible study tonight that they have learned and realized some points. There's always another way to look at. Mm hmm. Because I'm looking at some points of view studying about Sodom and Gomorrah. More went on than just the homosexual thing. Mm hmm It had to. Otherwise, how, how, how is it that Lot's in heaven? Because he's, he's, he, he's numbered with the great hall of faith. Is that in Ephesians 11, is it, I think it is? Name all of those, those great men, Moses, Samson, all of them. And Lot was named, righteous Lot. Uh, Hebrews, yeah. Not Ephesians, Hebrews, yeah. So how was he looked upon? As righteous. Because you don't know what's going on in somebody's head. And what's going on with them personally. You just go by what you think you see. Y'all ready? Who helped a eunuch, E-U-N-U-C-H, who helped a eunuch to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? Who helped a eunuch to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? Who helped? See, the pencil and paper would come in handy, you know. Mm -hmm. Leave them phones alone. Who helped a eunuch to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? And next week, we can not only answer that question, but what part of Isaiah the eunuch was reading? Stand up when you finish. This was good tonight. Yes. Who helped a eunuch to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? Oh, and what? And next week we're going to talk about what part of Isaiah the eunuch was reading that he was hung up on. We we'll save that for next week. Mm hmm. If you finish, if you finish writing a text in or whatever you're doing behind them pews, if you finish, this was good. Hey, bless his name. This was good. Now I do have a question before we finish, so, 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 Sister Polite. How's Brother Polite doing? He's at home, right? Right. So you're treating the man right now. You're taking care of him. You ain't giving the man no hard time. Now. See? Don't, don't let me get that midnight call. Pastor, you got to get me out of him. She working me. Give us a closing prayer, a closing prayer, um, Sister Foster. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now, Father, for blessing us to come together once again. Yes, Lord. For Bible study, God. We mm. thank you for all that you give us when we come. Mm. Lord, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would give each and every one of us traveling mercies back home. Back home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This was good. Thank y'all for coming out. This was good. I give y'all a hand. Mm. 
Oh, also, um, Minister Harris, um, she wrote a very good book on prayers. My, yeah, take a look at them when you can. You got, she got, huh? Right behind me. Yeah. She did a very good, yeah, a very good book. She wrote a book on prayer. Talk to her about it. She'll give you the details. <laughs>